I first paid attention to pa Pakistan in 1971. I was a college freshman. There were two things that year that caught my attention on the international scene. One was the apartheid system in South Africa, and the other was the civil war going on uh, that ultimately ended up creating Bangladesh. So I've had my eye on both of those over time, I must admit. I worked feverishly on the apartheid system uh, for about 10 or 15 years until we were able to get Mr. Mandela out and then brought him here to the country and the rest became history. As you know, he became president. But this issue, this whole notion of the Civil War uh, and the creation of Bangladesh and the future of Pakistanis is something that really concerns me. I met recently in my office uh, with a gentleman by the name of Anwar Hassan, who brought with him several uh, Pakistanis from across the state of Maryland uh, to meet with me to make sure that I could hear firsthand their pleas and their positions. And it was out of that meeting and learning about this that I wanted to be here today because I want to associate myself with the remarks of Brad Sherman, who said, I too am a friend of Pakistan. But as Brad said, Pakistan must shine a way to show the world uh, that it is a true shining and, and living democracy. Um, there are a number of things that trouble me when I go through the extensive history, just going back to 1971. Uh, but more importantly, the things that concern me right now. The human rights abuses that have not just been alleged, but have been documented. The assassinations, which people are not calling assassinations. People just get killed and die or mysteriously no longer live. The separation of families and children uh, that's continuing to go on sort of unabated because the lens of the world is not necessarily focused on that. The targeting of journalists who want to report to the rest of the world what's going on and who fear for their lives, even though they are journalists, uh, because they know what can and oftentimes does happen to them. The corruption that we all are aware of, the money over the table and the money under the table that buys silence and buys fear at the same time. I'm concerned about the denial of religious freedoms, the suppression of one's desire to worship and believe as they want to. And then we are all aware of the other things that just tear our hearts out, the flooding that has just been constant and going on for a long time. The three billion dollars uh, from the IMF to help bring about stabilization and the worry as to whether or not those dollars are gonna be spent the way they should be spent. But most of all, the seriousness is around the subject of free and fair elections. There has to be a time and a date certain, and then there has to be, in my opinion, oversight. And that oversight should come from the UN. Now let me tell you a little bit about free and fair elections when they're not free and fair and are not overseen. Some of you will remember the baby Doc Duvalier reign in Haiti and how there came about a sense to move toward freedom. And these elections were scheduled, they were held, they had a date certain. But the people who wanted to disrupt them found a way on the day early that day to take machetes to women and to cut their arms off and to cut their legs off, knowing that that word would spread rapidly through the hillside and through the villages and that people would not come out and vote. And they did not come out and vote. So when I say supervised, I can't tell the UN what to do. I'm not a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. I am an observer and a student of history. I just believe that we've got to find a way to make sure that is how they are guaranteed People will always vote in their best interest. 
if they get a chance to vote. So those are the things that I wanted to mention that concern me. As I said, I've been looking at this since 1971. I probably am almost a student in Pakistani history. But I do want you to know that, like Brad and so many other members of the Congress, I share your concerns, I share your fears, and I share the fears of people on the ground who are not here, who don't have a voice, and who are living under those sort of conditions. So I will yield back. I want to thank Brad Sherman for his leadership, as I said before, on this, and to thank him also for the opportunity to address all of you. Thank you.